Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while but I hope your 2024 is going well so far. This is just going to be a build video for you guys who want to start to build their own custom whoops who need a bit of guidance. As you guys can see, I am using my already functioning 65 build but for the sake of this video, I am disassembling it. Once in a while, it is good to disassemble things and clean off the whoop as dust and debris can get stuck in it, cleaning using some alcohol and a brush. Once that's done, we can start with our parts. These are the parts that I'll be using for today, and I'll be starting with the flight controller, which is the Super B F4 Lite FC. I like this because it's the lightest option I have right now, and it's fairly durable. But one thing to note though is that it uses SPI ELRS. I'm using these Happy Model 0702 motors, which I think is a standard. They're really cheap and readily available where I am from, but if you can get your hands on Newbie Drones or Weebleed FPV motors, I'd get those instead. I'm also using this LDARC 199C camera, which I chose because it's slightly lighter than my favorite camera, the Foxier Pico. I like the large FOV as it helps me fly in small spots like my room. I also 3D printed my own canopies such as this from Jacob Dust, as the Beta FPV light canopies are absolute garbage when I kept breaking them in span of days. For our flight controller, you can either use the screws that come with your FC or these flange type ones which I find to be a bit better. I also like to use peak screws for my motors as they are much lighter compared to metal ones that they give. And I actually got these from some Beta FPV 0702 motors I got a while back. Here I'm just using Beta FPV 65 Pro frame with these Gemfan 35mm props. Just be careful this frame can't fit all flight controllers. Lastly, I find this OVX300 to be the lightest and most capable VTX that is available to me and it uses a UFL connector. Just a reminder that you don't have to buy these exact parts and you can get other parts that you have available. Of course, you will also want to have your soldering equipment on hand, some screwdrivers, foam tape, and some other tools that will help with the build. The first thing I usually do is attach the VTX to the flight controller using some 3M tape. In this build, I will be putting the VTX underneath the flight controller because it allows me to have a cleaner build and the VTX will be a little bit more protective. If it's too difficult, you can still place it on top of the flight controller. I've flown it that way for months and I've had no issues. Here I'm positioning the VTX diagonally, making sure that it doesn't cover the motor pads while also making sure that the VTX wires are pointed towards the direction where the pads of these wires will be connected to. Here I'm just showing you guys the wires that I mentioned earlier. Black is ground, red is 5 volts, and the green one is our smart audio, which will be connected to TX2. Take note of this because when we are setting up Betaflight, we will put UR2 as smart audio. Also take note that your solar joints should be nice, round, and shiny. We don't want pointy and dull because this means it's either a cold joint that can easily break off, or if it's pointy, it may cause a short circuit. Also be careful when soldering, uh, don't use your hands this close to the joint. I'm used to it and I don't feel pain but for you it's better if you just see some tweezers. I'm making a small piece of wire to connect from video out of the flight controller to the video in of the VTX. First, you twist then thin the end of the exposed wire and solder that to the video in of the VTX. Again, make sure the joint is shiny and round. So here, I'm just routing this wire so I can guess how long it should be. I'm going to cut it slightly longer than it should because I don't want it to have any tension. I'm now going to strip the other end of this wire and twist the exposed section so that the end is not frayed when we thin it. Okay. 
After this, we will solder it like a while ago, thinning the end and soldering it into the video output on the pad. I make my own linear antennas because they're really durable and lightweight, while also learning a little bit about antennas and radio waves, which is always good. I learned this from Project Blue Falcon a long time ago, but you can also read about this from Oscar Lee Young's page about it, which has basic information about it and some equations to follow to make antennas. For now, here is a snippet of the article and it says that for 5.8 GHz, we need an exposed section that is 12.92 mm in length. For now, we do need a simple UFL antenna that we will modify later. Here, I'm using my calipers to accurately set them to my desired length, which is 12.92 mm. The next step is to expose a decent amount of this antenna's inner wire, and we will do this by lightly scoring the outside section and peeling off the black layer really carefully. To see that metal section here that is shiny? We're going to remove that very, very carefully. And that is how we expose the inner part of the antenna wire. Now that we have a decent length of exposed wire, we will go back to our calipers and cut the exposed section to our desired length. Congratulations! You have now made your own 5.8 GHz basic linear antenna. You can now attach this to your VTX and we can move on to the next step. So when it comes to motor soldering, it's kind of just the exact same thing as the previous solder joints that we've mentioned here. You want to have nice, shiny, and round ends. Since we have a lot more wires to consider, I like to line them up like this after stripping and twisting the ends so I can thin them all at the same time. I also want to make sure that none of the wires are frayed as that will give me a hard time later on and may cause a short. So, I want them to be nice and clean like this. Just a few tips when it comes to attaching these motors to the pads on the FC. First and foremost, these FCs are very thin and are easily damaged by heat. If you apply too much heat for a long amount of time, you may end up breaking something, or worse, you might remove a component or even peel off the pad itself. What you want is a good amount of temperature like 360 degrees celsius and you want to be in and out within 3 seconds. If your joints are spiky, that means you need a little flux. You also want to avoid hitting other components that are nearby. Here you can see some resistors and capacitors right beside the motor pads. Be very careful when soldering next to these. Now, we're actually very close to the finish line and there's only a few things left to do for this build. The next step is to attach the electronics to the frame. We want to be very delicate and very gentle at this point because our drone is at its most fragile state. We want to be careful that we don't pull or pinch any wire and we want to make sure that we take this slow and steady to avoid breaking things. Generally, I put the rubber grommets on the flight controller after I've managed to push through the motors through the frame. Also, here you can see that the VTX does not block the battery slot, which is what we want. We will move the antennas to a better spot later after we attach the motors to the frame. One last inspection of our progress, and our whoop is looking good. We want to make sure that the wires are not loose, but also want to have some slack so it doesn't break off. 
After attaching my canopy, I will move the VTX antenna up to hopefully have a better signal and cover it with some heat shrink to give it a little bit more protection. The last hardware step we need to do is to put our props on, but usually you would do that after setting up Betaflight. But for the sake of admiring our build, I'll put them on now. I like to check my weight as it has a direct effect on my poop's performance. Generally, I want to go as light as I can without compromising durability and luckily my build here comes at 18.54 grams. Next, I will check for magic smoke and the smell of crispy electronics. We shouldn't see any smoke with how we made sure that our solder joints were good, we know that there's no bridging anywhere, and that there's no solder balls scattered on our FC. We also know that we connected all the wires to the right spots. The lights are on which means we have power to the flight controller and we're all good. Here I am just checking if my video is working, but you would usually do this after setting up your VTX tables in Betaflight. I'm using a DIY FPV monitor that's made out of an old pair of goggles, and if you guys want to make one for yourself, let me know in the comment section below. And yes, I'm using a Runcam Thumb as a camera, and it actually works well as a webcam. Starting off in beta flight, the first thing that we see is the model in our setup tab. This should move corresponding to how your drone moves in real life, but since my accelerometer is turned off, mine won't move. Here we are in parts tab and as you remember, we are going to set UR2 as smart audio. In the configuration tab, the first thing that we will change is the PID loop frequency to 4kHz. We can also set our craft name and pilot name. And also I'm going to turn off air mode because we don't need that. Next up, we're just going to turn on our beepers because we need that and we're going to save and reboot. After saving and rebooting, let's just check if all of our settings were saved. And we're going to go back, 4kHz, our name, air mode off, and then our beeper. Here in power and battery, we don't usually change anything. In the preset tab, we'll be selecting UAV text book preset for 1 to 2S. And in the drop down menu, we'll be selecting things that apply to our build. And this is different per build. Now, after this, you click pick and save and reboot. Now we're in the PIDs tab, and there's actually three other tabs underneath this. Here is the PID section. And underneath, you can also find the motor output limit, which I set to 85. Going back up, we can select our rate profile, and this is my rates, they're kinda high. Uh, warning if you want to use these. And later, here we have the filter settings, which we won't actually be touching also. The next part is the receiver tab, which corresponds to a lot of the controller stuff. As I move my joystick, the corresponding axis shown on the left side should also move, so here, my pitch should go up and down, my roll should go left and right, and my throttle and yaw should move correspondingly. You can also see that my aux 1 is my top left switch, my aux 2 is my D switch, and my aux 3 is my C switch. Since this board is SPI ELRS, we do want to set that as SPRRX and choose ELRS, and we want to also put our binding phrase in there. Next, we have our modes tab, which we will be assigning certain switches to certain functions for the drone. With your controller connected to the drone, you can see that if I move AUX1, my arm will also move. And if I move my AUX3, my AUX3 and beta flight will also move. If you do not know which AUX switch you are using, you can always set this to auto and move the switch that you wish to use. Here, I'm using AUX1 and you can see that setting it to auto and then switching it will set it automatically to AUX1. In the motors tab, our D-Shot should be 300, motor stop and ESC sensors should be turned off, and our bidirectional D-Shot should be turned on. Our pulse should also be set to 12, and our diagram should also be reflected on our drone in real life. Here I'm just showing how the rotation of these propellers should be, 
this is considered the reversed configuration which moves these motors like this and we want these motors and propellers to follow the diagram that was shown in the motors tab if for some reason your motors are moving the wrong way you can always go to the esc configurator and set your motor to either rotate normally or in reverse i find that how we soldered our motors to the escs we need to set all of these to reverse next we have our ost and i like to keep it simple i just want the voltage my name and our signal last but not the least we are in the vtx tab where we can actually set a bunch of cool things but this won't actually be shown until you add your vtx table now you can find your vtx table here in the happy model website and you can just copy paste this and put this in your cli after that you can now change your settings such as band channel and power where i actually set it to 25 and i'm going to set my band and channel to r1 we've built this from start to finish We've checked that our video feed works and we've set up our beta flight settings, our switches work, and we are bound to our wolf. Our motors spin correctly and our props are placed where they should be. The last thing we need to do is a test flight.